Good evening, everyone. So welcome to another episode of Kamira Live. Today, myself and Dr. Ratna will be talking about uh, the keloid scars. So we all know, most of us, uh, some, some any one member in the family, either it could be a child or uh, uh, one of our elderly uh, elders in the, at home who had undergone a bypass surgery, they all uh, end up getting this key, what we call keloidal scars. So today, myself and Ratna will take you through uh, why uh, this uh, scar happens, why only some people get such scars, and uh, why uh, you know it comes again and again when we start try to treat it. And is there some uh, better options available now? And uh, uh, what are the safety factors and things like that when doing when performing those procedures? So let me uh, introduce uh, Dr. Ratna. Dr. Ratna is a radiation oncologist specialist. Uh, she practices out of Apollo Speciality Hospital, and we've been working together for a very long time because uh, initially the treatment option available for this was just removal of the uh, scar, and then we used to give some injections, and then it keeps coming again, and people take this injection again and again. Sometimes people take it for years together, and then they end up with diabetes and other problems. So then we started looking out for options, and with uh, advancement, uh, there was uh, uh, papers, uh, and in fact, Dr. Ratna has done a lot of study on this, and uh, um, uh, and then we come out with this. Uh, I mean, she has done study, and then we thought uh, 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 we combined and started doing radiotherapy as an option after surgery for recurrent keloids, and we found the results were very good. And so now I'll take you through, and uh, I will ask Dr. In uh, Ratna to introduce also and then tell her experience about this keloid before I take you through the process. Yeah, Dr. Ratna. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Ratna Devi, radiation oncologist. I, along with Dr. Jainti, we are going to be talking on the keloidal scars today. Yes, uh, um, our association goes for more than about 10 years now. And we have uh, quite a number of cases which we have done together, along with surgery and radiotherapy in keloidal scars. And we have been quite successful. The cosmetic result has been really good. So usually patients are very much worried when we talk about radiotherapy. The minute we say radiotherapy, yes, it is basically, it is a major treatment application done for oncology cases. But there are cases where we can use the same radiotherapy in non cancerous conditions also, like the benign tumors, like keloid scars, where we have been very, very successful. The radiation where what we use here in keloidal scars is the electron radiation. It is a very superficial radiation with zero side effects. There is no side effects. By the, by the way, radiation is nothing but high energy x-rays. They are nothing but high energy x-rays with which we treat. So x-rays has this property to interfere with the collagen synthesis and the abnormal collagen synthesis and the abnormal fibroblast. That is why we have been pretty successful in treating these kind of recurrent keloidal scars. Okay, so why do some uh, people, uh, you, you all know what I have, uh, we've just uh, shown you a picture of a keloid scar in the ear. So why do some people uh, get uh, keloidal scars while others don't? So there are various theories. We don't have a definite answer as why this happens, because if there's a definite answer, I'm sure we would have found a, a treatment option for that as well. But the theories are like, they say that when you're trying to pierce the ear or during the surg surgery, or when somebody is trying to scratch a wound, the uh, sebaceous or a sebum uh, in a oil, the sebum means there uh, is a secretion from the oil secreting glands in your skin. So that part of the sebaceous uh, gland or the, the sebum material gets buried into the skin. And that's why it gets um, gives rise to this kind of a keloid. But these are all theories. But what I would like you to uh, imagine is uh, uh, a keloid scar. So how do you identify that this scar is a keloid? So there are two uh, different types of big scars. One is what you commonly see after burns. That is hypertrophic scar. The second is uh, the keloidal scar. The difference between the two is that, let's say if you have an injury, burns injury, and the injury, the size of the original injury is five centimeters, the length and five centimeters width. If that five by five centimeter area becomes thicker than your normal skin, 
it, it becomes elevated from the normal skin and it remains within that 5 into 5 centimeters, then it's a hypertrophic scar. So that scar has hypertrophied. Whereas a keloid scar is if the original injury size is just, let's say, 2 by 2 centimeters and the resultant scar spreads are beyond 5 by 5 centimeters or 3 centimeters, uh, beyond this 2 centimeters, then it's called a keloidal scar. So basically, keloidal scar spreads beyond the margin. That's the first thing you should know. Second, uh, hypertrophic scar sometimes when you start using uh, compression. So then why does this scar become big? Others remain very flat and a straight line. So now this uh, cause for this keloid or the hypertrophic scar, uh, I would like to explain. Like the brain gets, let's say, for example, all scars are made out of fib uh, fibrous tissue. So when an injury is caused, there is some signal from the brain which actually stimulates uh, formation of this fibrous uh, tissue and the uh, injured or incised area or the wound actually heals with the normal amount of fibrous tissue. But in situations where there is hypertrophy or there is a keloidal tendency, the, I sort of imagine that the brain is sending a signal saying that that area is going to open up. So there is more signal coming to form more scars. So you can imagine like that. Once this process is triggered, it continues. If you keep removing it, the brain thinks, oh, it's opened up. Now I'll produce more scar. Then it produces more scar. That's why when you remove and if you don't do anything, the recurrent keloid is actually bigger than the original one. And this is the reason that when you uh, when there is a suspicion of somebody forming a keloidal scar, even when we attempt to remove them, we give certain injections which can actually break down this formation of this fibrous tissue. So I'm sure uh, you know if any of you have had keloid, you would have taken injections which is called keno uh, cot or triamcinolone. It's a steroid, and sometimes we also give some chemotherapeutic agents like 5-fluorouracil. So these injections are given to break down these uh, fibrous tissues which are formed in excess. Now, most of the time, even after removal, they keep, recur they keep recurring. So this is what happens. So the treatment protocol and the other part is the discomfort. Once it starts, then there's a lot of itching. And you know, when they itch, they, they form uh, wound uh, raw areas that can get secondarily infected. And because some of them, uh, they uh, it comes on the uh, sternal area, commonly, sometimes even in the breast. So uh, uh, you can get keloid even in the breast in some uh, women, following even, uh, uh, no, no, you know, uh, uh, just without, they would have had a small boil and then they scratched it and then it becomes a big uh, scar. Now, um, the, uh, in these areas, sometimes even the hair follicles get buried inside and then that causes recurrent infection. So you can see a picture of a lady having a keloidal scar in the breast. So she didn't have any injury as such, just small boil and then and then it started recurring. Now, uh, the uh, reason for all this, as I told you, is the uh, formation of excess formation of fibrous tissue. So uh, now... In many times, I mean, most of the time when you have a, a, injury, a scar or an abnormal uh, tissue, you can, if there are a lot of loose skin nearby, we can actually remove the whole scar and try to close it again. But that is not easy, as it is said, in a keloidal scar, because if you remove the whole keloidal scar and we close it, the chance is that you will get another keloid. And if we can't keep on removing because there won't be so much of excess uh, tissue. So the removal of keloid is we actually do not cross the boundary of the keloid. We try and remove within the keloid. So the keloidal tissue is very, very hard. In fact, while removing a normal, it's very difficult to remove the normal scissors. So what we use these days are laser. We use a laser to cut through this keloid so that the bleeding is less. And we try to approximate the edges. There is some amount of tissues left behind. So this is basically like a debulking surgery. Once we do this debulking surgery, basically we don't allow the signal to start and reform. So then the same day or soon after surgery, we, I send the patient to Dr. Ratna. So now Dr. Ratna will help you understand how she does this process. And I'm sure all of y'all, when you hear radiotherapy, there is a lot of fear whether surrounding tissues will get damaged, you can get cancer, or, you know, because it's uh, radiotherapy is done for, when you do for a breast cancer, people have a lot of side effects and things like that. So she will tell you 
what how is it different doing radiotherapy for a keloid from doing for a cancer treatment and how safe it is dr ratna over to you thank you jainti learned quite a lot from you about the surgery i uh, lot of information very nice and uh, this breast patient also was one of our patient where the results was very good after the surgery jainti sends a patient to me within 24 to 48 hours and if it is early interfered the results are very good so once the patient lands up with me the first and foremost i have to remove the fear of the patient because they are coming there i'm not a plastic surgeon i'm a oncologist and they get the fear why am i here why is it cancer so i want to make it clear it is not cancer keloid is a non cancerous it is definitely not cancer only the equipment with which i am treating because i can treat with that equipment the patient comes to me so keloid generally doesn't need oncology kind of treatment it doesn't have a large doses of uh, treatment is not required the number of days minimum will be required is something like 3 maximum to 5 so 3 to 5 days will be the minimum uh minimum 3 and maximum 5 days will be 3 will be the treatment time and each day the treatment time will be around 3 to 4 minutes only and the type of radiation which we use is electron and it will be very very specifically given only to the area where uh, dr jayanti is operated so the adjacent tissue does not get any exposure of radiotherapy it is very precise high precision very very precise only to the area that is the affected area will be treated the idea behind so that this scar does not recur again that is all whatever there was uh, keloid it has already been removed by the surgeon my job is only to prevent it from coming so that can be achieved is it painful is an next question absolutely zero pain like how x rays don't give you any pain same way this electron therapy you will not feel anything at all you will feel as though you are lying in a machine the machine doesn't even touch you only the rays will be directed to this area i kept repeatedly telling it is electron treatment electron treatment only to make you understand these are superficial electrons and there is no penetration even if you treat a ear lobe the, there is immediately under your ear lobe is your temporal lobe that is your brain it doesn't go there at all if you treat the ear lobe it remains the treatment remains only in the ear lobe nothing goes beyond that it is very safe for children as well lot of pediatric uh, patients also dr jayanti will be referring to me for this kind of keloid so even it is safe for them so the best things are it is out patient procedure shorter duration no pain very safe no anesthesia nothing is required Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, what the, the typical process? So, what we do is whenever someone comes to us with a keloid, so it is not that every patient who have not undergone any uh, trial of any procedure that we straight away go and do this procedure. So, uh, if a patient has got keloid before and is treated, and uh, suppose we are doing surgery on that patient, so most of the time the fear is if someone has a keloid. in one area will they get keloid in every other scar so the answer is there is a chance that the remain other scars that they uh, get over due course can also become keloidal but it doesn't mean that all the scars because i have seen many patients who've got lot of keloids but their cesarean scar is absolutely normal so why is mostly cesarean scar is normal is because there there is a, a gravitational effect or there is tension between the scar because the stomach keeps pushing the uh, um, scar down so there is no uh, sort of a tension of separation whereas if you look at the area between the um, two breast or chest uh, uh, it's an area where there's a lot of uh, you know trying the chest both the chest is trying to pull again on either side so there is a lot of tension so the theory is when the uh, there is a wound or the when there is a surgical incision uh, which becomes keloid because there's a lot of tension in the uh, suture line or the, as i told you the theory is that see some sebum gets buried and that triggers off this process and um, uh, reaction to sometimes when they have wound breaks down and then it heals and then a lot of scars are formed and then it becomes keloidal so all these reason so now when a patient comes let's say somebody had a ear piercing and they have a keloid 
So actually, initially, uh, what we used to do is we just used to core. We, we just used to remove what we call a core uh, through and we remove that keloid. That is intralesional excision. And then we close the lesion primarily and allow it to be healed. This is what we do. But then and uh, in the same process, we also inject triamcinolone or uh, we, the tra brand name of the injection is Kinocot. And then uh, we uh, some, we also combine sometimes injection called Botox because there are some papers when that combines, it reduces the pull and thereby preventing keloid formation. And also this some 5-fluorouracil whenever is required, some combination. And then we see how it recurs. But most of the time, people who come to us are the ones with recurrence. They have done removal by, with their near, nearby doctor and then it is recurred again. So when recurrence come, now we don't take a chance. The protocol is we remove the, the keloidal scars through laser in order to avoid bleeding. Then we, we don't put very big dressing because it is easy for the Dr. Ratna to remove and then uh, uh, do the procedure. So then immediately I send the patient to Dr. Ratna. So I would like Dr. Ratna to explain to you, uh, because I'm sure you don't need to know the technical, but you would like to know what is the uh, radiation that she used, because all of you like to know how how costly is this treatment. And uh, uh, so uh, Dr. Ratna, can you please explain that? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, these recurrent scars are the ones where uh, there is an indication for radiotherapy. After the initial surgical procedure, the patients land up for radiotherapy. Keloid scars, which are mostly what we see is in the earlobe, then in the sternum. And the sternum ones can be really bad also. They can be itchy, flaky, recurrent bleeding can occur. So that can be disturbing apart from the cosmetic also. So there are, uh, and there, there have been many patients who had uh, these kind of ear keloid, which was disturbing. It was painful. There was one girl who uh, was referred by Dr. Jayanti. She used to tell she couldn't lie down on that side because it, it was at the back of the lobe and it was quite big. And whenever she lied down that side, she had a constant pressure. So it used to be giving her a lot of discomfort. So in those aspects also, this keloid scar removal and followed by radiotherapy will have a good result. And uh, there is... Uh, Absolutely, it is uh, patient friendly, no pain. As I told you already, even children can be treated without any uh, fear of uh, radiation side effects. It's totally painless and pretty cost effective. Um, the maximum cost for the radiation course itself will be within 20,000 uh, with a good uh, LENAC machine. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ratna, can you uh, tell me, like, uh, um, uh, you told that that could be no side effects. Is there any, uh, uh, you know, the commonly patient asked me whether some damage to the nearby skin can happen or anything like that. Is there any experience like that? Would you like to clarify? Uh, uh, ideally, what we are using is only superficial electron, superficial x-rays, rather I could call it as electron therapy. So the damage caused by this is practically nil with the dose with which I'm treating. So the higher the dose, it is equally proportional to the damage created. Here, the dose required is very, very less for a keloid. So there is absolutely no damage to the skin at all. Okay. Uh, that is number one. Coming to the adjacent structures, yes, whenever we talk about rays, these are divergent rays. And what happens if I have to get treated in this side? What about the spillage of rays is what the patient is almost worried about. Here, because of the high precision technology, the adjacent normal structures will be completely out of the field of radiotherapy. That means absolutely, if I have to put a halt at one point, I can put a halt at that point with the rays. The rays do not spill over to the even the next centimeter. So that way, the high precision helps us to be in the area of the treatment. So, so that is another advantage. And since these doesn't require also, see, in a cancer patient, I want that uh, little bit of extra margin from the uh, margin of treatment. Here, I will not require. And therefore, strictly, we adhere to only to the area where which we have to treat. So one doesn't have to have any fear whether normal tissue damage will happen, any untoward side effect will happen because the dose required is slow. Absolutely, fear, you, you can be uh, be without fear. Yeah. So, Dr. Uh, one, uh, so I also have been having this doubt 
So can you do radiotherapy without surgical removal? Why it should be done only after surgical removal? Um, see, uh, radiotherapy here is only has to be done only after surgery. Uh, radiotherapy per se for as a treatment for keloid, it is not useful at all. It's only used as an adjuvant treatment. Here, this is not cancer cells. Keloid are not cancer cells. Cancer cells has a different kind of a cell cycle. That is, we interfere with the uh, cell cycle of the proliferating cells. We interfere, and that is why we bring about a halt and then kill the cells. That is totally a different radiobiology altogether. Here in the keloid, it is a these are scar tissue, basically scar tissue, which is going, going on multiplying because of various reasons. So unless and until you remove it, I can only help you in prevention of recurrent scar coming back. I cannot remove the tissue. Keloid tissue cannot be removed with radiotherapy. Okay. So uh, yeah, while I'm going to uh, speak to you, I'll also address some questions. So some people want to know about PRP and uh, 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 PRF and all that. Now, for keloidal scars, we don't use any of them, right? This PRP, PRF, all this basically are used after removal of, or we do something for the scar and then PRP is used when the, in the healing process. So basically, let me explain. Let's say you have an acne scar. So the acne scar is like you have an injury in the uh, your uh, dermis, uh, of the skin. The skin has two layers. You have epidermis, dermis, upper and lower layer, and then you have fat cells below that. Now, if an injury goes up to the uh, dermis, that's when you end up with a scar. If it's only in the epidermis, that is the upper layer, it's like how you, when a hot water falls on the skin, there's a boil that's formed, the skin peels off, and then it heals. There's no scar. Initially, you have a pinkish skin, then it forms a normal skin, and in Asian skin, it become, become darker or lighter, and then it heals. But when the injury goes to the deeper tissue, that's when you end up with scar wherever in the body. Whether you cut the skin for the full sickness or you scratch the skin, when the injury is that deep, that's when you get a scar. Now, to correct your scar, we have also have to go to the depth because otherwise you can't. So if you go to that depth, you may end up, we may end up creating another scar. So what we do in most of this other uh, scars is we do what is called controlled depth injury. So we use derma pen, lasers, or all the others to create a controlled depth damage in the scar and in the neighboring area. Then um, uh, what we do is, so once we create this controlled depth injury, the, in order to enhance the healing process, if there are more platelets, more growth factors, the scar heals uh, faster, better texture, for that, all these PRP and PRF is uh, used. So radiotherapy is not used for acne scars. There are studies where radiotherapy, we were discussing with Dr. Atma, for burns. When you have hypertrophic burn scar, where you have extensive burns on the face, arms, then again, after we remove them, we shave them or intralesional excision and try to approximate them with uh, 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 sutures, then if, when, if you apply radiotherapy, the chance that it Regrowth uh, or hypertrophies again is very very minimal. So there are literature papers suggesting a good result even in high severe hypertrophic burn scars. Then uh, so that is uh, the other thing. So we will not radiotherapy is not done as a treatment for acne scars. So please don't carry that message. So it's done only for keloidal scars. Next there are um, uh, some uh, patient uh, who wants to know whether keloids definitely have to be treated. So Keloids are benign tumors. So if you are okay to live with that uh, bump on the ear or in the chest, you can leave it as such. It's not mandatory that you have to remove. And if you don't remove, it will become cancer. So it is only most of them under have discomfort. There's itching. There's either uh, ingrown, uh, the hair between them uh, actually grows inside. And then they have recurrent, uh, some discharge coming out. So there is some odor coming out, especially in the pre-sternal area. This is very, very common. So I have patients who've been coming for more than almost seven, eight years. They take a course of three, four months. Then everything settles. When they leave for six months, they come back again. So in some areas, Dr. Rakna will uh, also tell, nowadays we will not remove and we will not have enough tissue to close. So actually we just debulk and along with the raw wound, we send, I send her to Dr. Rakna and she's able to give radiotherapy even if the wound is raw. So there is not, no uh, reason why it has to be closed and only then uh, we have to uh, you know do radiotherapy. So even on a raw wound, she does. And afterwards, we just allow the wound to heal. 
Um, uh, so uh, I, I was asking you, Doctor. So most of the patients who come, uh, Doctor, initially they had this fear about you know radiotherapy, and now, now they are quite accepting. And when we explain to them, now uh, one more, uh, I would like you to clarify one more thing for all the clients: Is there any chance of somebody getting a cancer because they undergo a radiotherapy for keloid? Unlikely. There is uh, no reports uh, till now. We have seen that. With this kind of a small uh, dose of radiotherapy, which has been treated for keloid, the second malignancy could come. So uh, there is no uh, there is no need to have a fear of second malignancy. Yeah. So uh, before we conclude, let me just go through uh, the process. So the keloid are uh, scars beyond uh, the original margin of injury. So scar, uh, let's say if you have a three centimeter scar and the, I mean, three centimeter injury and the scar is about five centimeters, which is beyond the margins, then we call them keloidal scars. Uh, if you get keloidal scar in one area, there is a tendency that if you have scars elsewhere, it could become keloidal, but doesn't mean all of them will. If you have a tendency, it's whenever you undergo any procedure, it's better to be cautious, take some intralesional steroidal injections as a precaution. Uh, with or without combination of other injection. In those situations, radiotherapy is not mandatory. But if you have recurrent keloid, now the latest advancement and suggested treatment option is to debulk the original keloid by removing them within the boundary and either trying to approximate the edges or allow them to heal on its own and then go for radiotherapy immediately. That is within 24 hours. And Dr. Ratna, after evaluation, usually decides whether you need a dose between three days or five days. And then it is very safe to take radiotherapy. There is no uh, damage to the surrounding tissues. Uh, there is no pain during the procedure. It doesn't lead to any malignancy. And with the results that we have uh, got uh, are quite satisfying. We have now follow up over uh, two years. And uh, uh, those photogra photographs, I was not able to present the after photographs to you because we, we are speaking from home and it's on a drive. But the results have been very, very satisfactory. Um, satis I can show you one photograph uh, of a patient who had extensive keloid uh, all over. So basically, you can see, you can imagine uh, that he had keloids, um, arms, chest, um, everywhere he had keloid they were all big bumps just like how you're seeing in the yellow but then we, we have done multiple sessions and we've removed all of them and what you're seeing is the final result now all of them are removed and they've all healed and now the patient is under um, uh, follow-up for us so when we remove when you allow them to heal on their own this is how the wounds look like and then they all become flat right. Thank you so much, Dr. Ratna, for being with us. Uh, and we'll continue to uh, you know, uh, work together. Uh, we'll also, we are actually trying to see how we can come out with the long-term results of all these patients. Thank you so much. Thank you.